Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursalim Sayyidina Muhammadin Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ismain Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, It's a great honor and a privilege To welcome our guests All the way from Switzerland None other than Dr. Yahya Baptiste Broda. He's an assistant professor and research associate at the Baqasid Institute. He holds a PhD in religious studies from the University of Freiburg, Switzerland. He has prepared an interdisciplinary thesis entitled Islamic Social Work in Switzerland, which combines sociology, religious studies, and theology. And before that, <coughs> Excuse me. He obtained a bachelor's degree in political science in Paris, France, and a master's in social sciences in Freiburg, Switzerland. And has worked in the field of development, education, counseling, and social work. Involved in social work in the prisons and in humanitarian aid. He has traveled over 50 countries. And we are privileged and honored to have him here today. And also we thank you, Faisal as well, Faisal Sayyid, for coordinating everything. And we thank his, his hosts and his people that are accommodating here for his travels in, in the South Africa. Dr. Yahya has embraced Islam 16 years ago. So we welcome him to the holy city of Milton Sharif. <laughs> so welcome, Dr. Sal. Thank you for addressing us. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim wa salam ala al-Mursaleen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat Inna alhamdulillah nahmaluhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru wa na'udu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyidina wa min sayyati amalina وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل مقدة من لسان يفقه قولي أجينا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بارك الله فيكم شكرا شيخ لإستقبالك um, thank you very much to invite me, especially to our Sheikh Barak al I'm very uh, honored to be here today. And in the introduction, it was said that I studied in the university, but I think that when we have the privilege to talk in a blessed place like this mosque, uh, this doesn't really matter. Because we may study years, we may try to accomplish something in life, our work, but at the end of the day, we, we're here to remember Allah, 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 and we are all 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 at the same level. I mean, in appearance, because only Allah knows who has taqwa in his heart, and taqwa is what we want to accomplish. Taqwa is what we all try to get in his life before the important meeting with our Lord and therefore uh, the fact that uh, I got a PhD or nothing or uh, I dropped a primary school it, it shouldn't it matter at all because what we want to address today inshallah it's a very basic reminder first of all for, for my humble self and if we can share that we are beloved brothers here it's a very deep but simple uh, Islamic teaching that I would like to address today. Simple but important. So I would like to talk about envy. Envy, what means in Arabic hasad, which is a very problematic human behavior, which, which is one of the major sins, which has also a lot of dramatic consequences today in the world in any time of society. Al-Hassad, envy, exists 
anywhere, anytime, but Islam teaches us to get rid of that and to try to correct ourselves and we'll see on the basis of a few hadiths and verses how we can try to get rid of envy but also understanding the nature of this feeling of al-hasad. First of all, al-hasad, envy, is described in English as a resentment aroused by someone else's possession, but also qualities or luck. But in Islam, al-hasad means that you, you don't just want to get what the other people get. It is correct to wish what other people wish. The problem comes when you want the, this favor to be removed from other people. And that's where we start talking about hasad, envy. So basically envy means that we, are, we get frustrated, we get upset because someone, someone has something we don't have. It can be money, it can be relation, it can be luck, what so-called luck, it can be whatever favor we feel. And Sometimes people feel that it should be removed from them because we don't have we don't have that for ourselves, so we wish that to disappear for themselves as well. So this is the basic um, meaning of envy in that Islamic sense of hasad, which is considered as a very dangerous thing, a very um, problematic behavior, and we'll try to to see why. But First of all, if we go back to the Quran and Surah Yusuf, at the beginning of Surah Yusuf, verses 4 and 5, um, the father of Yusuf said to his child that uh, he shouldn't tell his dream to his brothers. The verse says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخواتك. Like say, oh my son, don't tell your dream, which is a vision, which is a true vision, spiritual gift he has to your brothers. فيكيد لك كيدا فل ف فيكيد لك كيدا. Because if you do so. It's like they will divide the world against you. Then the verse continues. In the shaitan al-insani alubu mubi. The 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 devil, the shaitan, is for the human beings um, a clear enemy, an obvious enemy. So the verse teaches us three things about hasad, about envy. Because first of all, uh, envy of Yusuf brothers against him. Come here from a, a spiritual giftness, a spiritual favor that Allah gave it to him. So people may be jealous, may be uh, envious of other people, not only based on money relation, but also for uh, whatever they get from Allah. Then the best show that it leads to violence, it leads to oppression, because because of this they want to devise a plot against him, alayhi the third teaching of the verse is it comes from shaitan experience. So al-hasad is a human behavior, but is not. Uh, it doesn't dignify us as human to feel that. Actually, it's a, a it's a plot of the devil which try to take people away from the straight, full path, from the the way to God. Then, if we look at the history, we see that. Envy is the source of evil and violence, the source of so many conflicts. It can be in one's family, in one's neighborhoods, but even in global wars, the main major scene to, the, to hate people because they have something we don't hate and we wish that it is get away from them. So it comes to human society. At every age, it's still a big contemporary issue, and that's why we, we should try, inshallah, to remember that and to see how it can affect our own life. But first of all, we can say that envy comes from the belief that other people are more fortunate, fortunate than we are. 
And that's the major cause of this desire. We think that other people have luck, they are lucky in their life, they are fortunate, but we are not. It can't be about money, it can't be about health, it can't be about size. You can see a, a big strong man and you, you may be smaller and you feel what is you know, stronger than me, what has more money than me, what has more luck with family and relations than us. The problem of that thinking is that equality does not exist in life because every, everyone has different conditions. Everyone is different. One may be strong, but, but the other may be small too. And the third person may, be, may have more money. And the fourth person may have more luck with his family. He may have a lot of children. He may have a good wife or a good husband. And therefore, it's not possible to compare. We cannot compare people's life even in this dunya. Also, another point is that everything changes. One person's condition today is not good. To, tomorrow, it may be the, the most successful people in his village, in his town. So everything is changing. And I think here, the Quran in uh, Surah Al-Isra, verse 21, is a very, uh, has a very wise teaching for all of us. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Look how we favor some of others in his life, how we give favor to some people over others. Basically, uh, favors, as we said, can be explained by different means, by money, by health, by relations, and a lot of things. But the verse continues. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَلَلْآخِرَةُ أَكْبَرُ دَرَجَاتٍ وَأَكْبَرُ تَقْدِيلًا but in the hereafter, there are greater rank and greater fame. For me, I feel this verse is so important because it shows that in this life, there is quite a kind of inequality that everybody witnesses. Everybody can to compare with others, so one day you feel you, you have more privilege than other people, but the next day you feel that you are underprivileged because of your problems. So basically, we live in, a, in this dunya, we don't have equality in terms of favor. But what's important here, the best say that in the uh, here and in the hereafter, these differences between people are even higher, even stronger. So we don't get the, the whole picture. So nobody can know in this life who is fortunate and who is not fortunate. Because we don't know what will happen to us after the death. Therefore, we can compare. Even in his life, nobody can say, uh, I'm very lucky in his life, and he is not lucky, because everything is changed. But if we get the biggest picture of the Akhirah, we, we just can try, we just have to try to be patient and to acknowledge the fact we don't know who is fortunate. <laughs> only Allah's wisdom, only Allah knows who has success here, and the most important success is in the other life. So basically, the main root of the problem is to think that others are happy, lucky, and we are not happy as them, and this is unfair. We shouldn't think it's unfair, as first of all, we don't understand people's, other people's conditions. Secondly, what's important for us is to remember that our life is a journey, and the main important thing in our life will be in the Al-Yom al our judgment, that's the time where, inshallah, we'll understand why we live certain things and we, we get a bigger picture of what happened and about people's condition. So, the problem of Hassan basically is to reject Allah's wisdom, is to refuse what Allah decided for our ourselves and to think that Allah's give the right a uh, good favor to other people and not and us. The contrary, so no, no we, we can say it's the solution of that problem. <coughs> the opposite feeling is what we call what we call in Arabic al qanaa contentment, satisfaction, to be happy with what we have. And this feeling qanaa 
is also a key of the peace of Sakina in his life. Because whatever we have in our um, inner human nature, we want always more, always more, in terms of money, in terms of relation, in terms of power, in terms of whatever. The humans, if they don't control themselves, they always wish to try other things. We're never happy, basically, with that feeling. But Qana means the exact opposite. It means we are satisfied with what Allah gave us to us, which doesn't prevent us to try to, to improve our life, but we are still happy with what Allah allows us. Because when, as many people say, if we lose the faculty to breathe, we just want to breathe. If you just don't have water for one, two days, we just want water. But no, as we have water, we don't even think of that. So, Qana'a is uh, very important to remember as uh, the fact we have so many favors in our life, most of us, alhamdulillah, and if somebody doesn't have good, the same thing we should have. Now, the Prophet's teaching, very important hadith here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. Very important and well-known hadith, Sahih, in both Bukhari and Muslim collection, which in English can be translated as "None of you truly believes or state or which the state of Iman until he loves for his brother what he would that which he loves for himself." That's a basic very fundamental teaching of our deen, which by itself it responds to the problem of hasad, by itself. Only this hadith is enough to reject the sickness of hasad in our life. But it's a, a goal to reach, inshallah. The fact that the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, get iman means to love for other people, or for our brothers, what we love for ourselves. So if we love for them what we love for ourselves, we want for them what we want for ourselves. So we cannot have this feeling of hasad. We cannot be envious. Because if my brother has success, even if I'm poor and rich, I should feel happy for him, and I should feel that I want that for everybody else. This is very fundamental teaching which is at the very aim and the very heart of our living. When we began to apply that in our life, we just try to make sure that other people have what they need, other people um, get the, the, the help. If I can share something, I have to share. And if our whole community apply that, the Ummah will be very powerful because today we are still affected by these hasad feelings in many countries, in many villages, in many families that uh, despite trying, I mean, and though we should just support each other, we are often busy trying to compare and trying to get what the other people get for our selfish interests. This hadith again, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحبه لنفسه is fundamental here. By itself, it replies to many of our problems and it should be implemented in our daily life as every day we can offer to our brothers what we like for ourselves. Not just in terms of money, in terms of advice, in terms of company, in terms of friendship and a lot of things we want to share all together. Astaghfirullah, barakallahu fikum, wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To Dr. Yahya Baptiste Bruna from Switzerland all the way, we honored and we thank him for coming here and honoring us and giving us beautiful discourse. May Allah protect him and always inspire the youth and the crowd that he is addressing. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين 
اللهم بلغ ثواب ما قرأنا سورة الكهف ونور ما تلونا هدية واصلة إلى روح نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإلى أرواح الأنبياء والأولياء وإلى أرواح شهداء الكربلاء وإلى أرواح أهل البيت وإلى روح شيخ الإمداد ساكن في بغداد شيخ عبد القادر الجيلاني قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى روح إمام الهند شيخ معين الدين قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى روح إمام الرعي أحمد كبير الرفاعي قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى روح إمام التريكة وغوث الخليقة شابه الدين نقشبا محمد الويس البخاري قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى روح مولانا شيخ محمد ناظم عادل الحقاني نقشبا قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى روح شيخ مصطفى يوسف قدس الله سنور عزيز وإلى أرواح كل أموات المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والذاكرين والذاكرات وإلى أرواح خاصة. منشن يو بلابت وان سيت هاف باستو وي باي نيم. شيخ علي ولي مريم بالا ولي الحج عثمان كاجي عائشة عثمان كاجي عثمان كابري حج عثمان كابري سيد عبد القادر نقشبان إمام أحمد كرزي كريم وحسن زاكر كوري إسماعيل عثمان كاجي عبد السمد دنكا زويل آدم يونس آدم محمد آدم. Maryam Kapri, Ibrahim Kapri, Fatima Patankar, Abdullah Patankar, Ila Rahmati, Shaykh Muhammad Salih Abadi, Ila Rahmati. Allahumma la tahrimna ajrahum, wa la tafrinna ba'dahum, wa aghfir lana, wa lahum arhamna ma'ahum. اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وادخلهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وارحمهم في الجنة يا رحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا يا مولانا يا رحم الراحمين اللهم اخفضنا من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة وارزقنا يا الله حلالا طيبا وعملا صالحا متقبلا سلامة في الدين والدنيا والآخرة يا رحم الراحمين اللهم عافنا يا الله بخصوص هذه الجماعة إيمانا كاملا وعمالا دائما ورزقا واسعا وأقلا تاما وعلما نافعا وعملا صالحا وخلقا حسنا وأعطنا عزة وصحة وراحة وفرحة وقوة لعبادتك وأعطنا معرفتك يا الله بحرمة القرآن العظيم والنبي الكريم على آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم انصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في فلسطين وانصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في كشمير وانصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في يمن وانصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في هند وانصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في اوغير وانصر المسلمين والمجاهدين في كل مكان اينما كانوا يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا ولوالدينا ولاستاذنا ولمشايخنا ولازواجنا ولاولادنا ولاولاد اولادنا ولجميع المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات يا ارحم الراحمين قال الله تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم على إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بخير دعواهم فيها سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم فيها سلام وآخر دعواهم عن الحمد لله رب العالمين إلى نية القبور يا رحمة